Hello and welcome to my presentation. My name is Gareth Townsend and I'm a first year uh, Ed D student at Liverpool John Moores University. And today I'm going to talk about the development of a professional identity by beginning teachers. I want to start off by talking about uh, how a large number of beginning teachers are leaving the profession. As a beginning teacher myself, this is something that I have become interested in. Um, and then we'll move on to look at how the identity of beginning teachers can be formed and look at one model for that uh, applied to my own practice. And then I want to look more deeply at metaphor and how the use of metaphor can be used to understand identity and understand the changes in beginning teachers' professional identity. And then based upon this, look at means of supporting beginning teachers um, to develop their own professional identity. We have the problem that a number of beginning teachers are leaving the profession within the first couple of years of qualifying. 15.7% of teachers who qualified in 2017 decided to leave the profession after one year. And over 20% of those who qualified in 2016 had decided to leave within two years. And not only are beginning teachers deciding to leave, but they're making this decision quite quickly. Typically, they've, they've decided that they want to leave a couple of months after they start to first consider it. Whereas more experienced teachers tend to consider this for a year or two first. Now, this is a problem because during that first year or two of teaching is when our identity as a teacher becomes part of us and a, a part of who we are. And so if teachers are deciding to leave before they fully adopted this role of a teacher, then, then that is a potential cause for concern. And that is what I want to look at. So Lacey in 1977 identified three stages of development in teacher identity. And these are what we're going to look at and apply to my own uh, practice as to why I can kind of relate to this theory um, quite significantly. They identified that first of all, we have a honeymoon stage that post qualification, we enter the profession with a sense of euphoria almost. And for me, I'd found a job, I started a new career and teaching was going well. And, you know, though behaviour management wasn't necessarily a problem. And I felt like I was producing some good lessons with some fresh ideas and the students were making progress. But then they identified a crisis stage. And for me, this came just before Christmas in that first year of teaching where we had an internal set of observations. And... For me, I, I tried some things out in this in this session um, and the person observing it um, gave me a grade three for that. And this kind of like took me by surprise because I felt like I was going well. I'd planned the lesson well. Um, I thought so. And I thought the activities were good and that all learners made progress. But there were some things that were picked up upon by the observer um, that they didn't think uh, quite met the standard of what was expected and I was given a grade three and after this Lacey identifies that we go through either a stage of failure or of getting by and that's the final stage of developing this identity as a teacher and for me I decided that I, I didn't want this to the failure to be what happened for me I wanted to progress I wanted to improve and I wanted to show that I was able to take this feedback on board so I arranged supports we put in place from managers, um, met weekly with my line manager um, to work on the things that need, that were picked up on, things like questioning and so on and so forth. And we worked on this for a term and then I requested a re-observation um, towards Easter time, which then came back as, as being good. So I was then able to get by and overcome this crisis and feel comfortable in the profession. But I want to talk about metaphor as being used to understand beginning teacher's identity. Once we've formed this identity, how can we then kind of understand where teachers place themselves within the profession? And recently I was asked to consider this myself. And the best metaphor that I could think of was that I was like a chameleon. And this is because 
currently there are a number of different roles that I have to undertake at work that require a different set of skills and a different identity for each, whether that's uh, being a mentor for other members of staff or trainee teachers, teaching um, like my normal day to day classroom job or as being part of a colleague or in meetings with uh, managers and so on and so forth. Each of those things requires a slightly different part of my own identity. And so that's why I felt that a chameleon who, when they move from environment to environment, their skin changes, their camouflage changes. And I felt like that was almost what I was doing as, as a teacher. I would leave my classroom where I'd been teaching with my teacher identity and I would go into a meeting with a trainee teacher to discuss uh, their targets and where they wanted to go for next week, which required a slightly different identity of mine. So I needed to kind of shed the old identity of just a standard classroom teacher and adopt this more mentoring one. And then I may move into a pastoral session with the group that I'm a personal tutor to. And that requires something slightly different from me and a slightly different side of my identity. So throughout the day, I can be kind of shifting and changing shape to the various different requirements of my role. And this is why a chameleon uh, for me was something that I could identify with quite strongly. And I found this experience quite useful in coming to terms with my own identity and understanding where I position myself within the workplace. So I wanted to look more at what some other teachers and other beginning teachers who are new to the profession I only qualified in 2017, so I'm still, this is my fourth year of teaching now, and I wanted to consider what other beginning teachers found with their, uh, with their metaphors and how those changed over time. But before we consider that, what exactly is a metaphor? And the Oxford et al. define this as involves employing a familiar object or event as a conceptual tool to elucidate features of a more complex subject or situation. Now, identity and professional identity is quite an abstract concept that could be quite difficult to understand. And so we want to use these metaphors in order to make it more familiar um, and explain this complex situation quite nicely. And Gillis and Johnson highlight that because these metaphors can reveal our own educational values, beliefs and principles, they are going to contain information essential to our growth as professionals. So if we want to understand how we can grow as a professional, we, we can talk about these, these metaphors and these ideals, um, which we'll see shortly uh, in an example. So Thomas and Beauchamp looked at the metaphors of beginning teachers over time, and they interviewed them at numerous stages from pre-service in that summer post-qualification before starting full-time right the way through that first year and they they noticed that the metaphors chosen by students and discussed by these new teachers changed throughout that period initially there was a real common theme of nurturing or of being a mother and caring for the students and those initial identities were heavily focused on the student. And you can see here the example that they selected is that they saw themselves as the captain of a boat and you have to take these people somewhere, but there are storms and high waves along the way. So what these beginning teachers are focusing on before they start actually teaching, before they begin their role, is it's all student focused. They want to focus on the students and the outcome for the students and nurturing those students to develop and become a more complete person. And a really common theme across numerous pieces of research is that of nurturing or of being a mother, um, particularly in primary school teachers, that, that motherly feeling of, of nurturing and caring for the students was particularly common. And that was found universally. So there's literature there from, from Canada, uh, from Vietnam and various other countries as well. So it's quite a universal concept that people see this teaching as a motherly nurturing role before they begin service. But this identity can develop. And Thomas and Beauchamp found that as the beginning teachers progressed into the year, they started 
to shift the focus of their metaphor and move away from this focus around students and onto this focus around themselves. So the focus of the metaphor became a lot more um, introspective and, and looking at themselves. And the example here is a survivor of the Titanic, but who didn't have a lifeboat and had to swim for shore. So there's some discussion there around there being a real struggle uh, to come to terms with things. And if we relate this back to the stages that Lacey had highlighted, we're looking quite strongly there at the crisis stage. Survivor of the Titanic is, is a really dramatic um, crisis that happened. And having to swim to the shore contributes that challenge, that battle to, in order to get to where you want to be. But they also highlight that there can be fluidity to teaching and some days you can have really calm waters you love being out there there are other people there to help you out <clears throat> and other days you might feel like you're on this ship all by yourself and wonder why am i here i didn't sign up for this again so it highlights there is a, a shift in teaching um and some days can be really great and some days can be can be a real struggle so these metaphors are have been able to kind of help us understand how teachers position themselves within the year initially there's a real heavy focus on the students moving on to the self as we get into the year and you can see that there is kind of metaphors there of crisis um the water being rocky and wondering why you're there surviving the titanic and so it got me wondering what can we do then as educators to help beginning teachers to uh, find themselves and, all, and place themselves within the profession and develop this professional identity. In teacher education, there's a real focus on the planning and delivery of lessons. And we focus on the skills needed for the classroom. And we look at things like questioning, which rightly so they're, they're necessary things to look at and the supervisors and mentors are effective at looking at the gaps in this knowledge and addressing the gaps in this knowledge and teachers can then come out with with some of these skills and good questioning skills but our identity is built up from more than this our identity as teachers is more than just the academic side that we portray in the classroom we may have a pastoral element and we may have to collaborate with colleagues and and this kind of stuff isn't necessarily focused on in initial teacher education and this is an important time as well because if an over and colleague find that teachers develop their sense of belonging to the profession throughout training or as newly qualified teachers and so it's that time when this support is critical in order to help them to develop their sense of identity so what what could we implement? New teachers go through periods of self-doubt and questioning in their early stages. And the metaphors that we've discussed show that. And a means of support is having this dialogue with significant others. Now, that could be line managers, colleagues, anybody that, that you feel that is open to listening and supporting. And this can help us to develop our identity. That can be internal reflexive discussion we have with ourselves, or it can be external conversation with others. And the combination of this can help us to develop and identify where, where we are and who we want to be. And this is highlighted again from those participants in Thomas and Beauchamp's study, who indicated that the opportunity actually to think reflectively and think aloud with these interviewers and have these conversations was an enjoyable experience and one that they appreciated having. So the purpose of this presentation wasn't necessarily to highlight what we needed to implement as initial teacher education, but to consider how we can use metaphors to help understand where teachers place themselves. And we can see then that the teachers do have a shift in where they focus their identity throughout that initial and that initial first year of practice and that support and being reflective and having dialogue can really help people to ground themselves and consider where they place themselves within their profession.